Hello everyone, today I'm going over the Bonk Gambit, I think that's how you pronounce it, which is a pretty interesting gambit that I came across recently. So let's see what it is. So e4, now you play d5, they take the pawn in the Scandinavian, and you play the move e5. Now their really only chance is to take the pawn, because otherwise you have a very comfortable position where this pawn is weak, but you still have those benefits of central control. And that is why we're going to be looking at what happens if they take. And so if they take, you take back with the bishop, and you are down a pawn, but in exchange for that pawn, you have a very open position for your bishops, for your knights. I mean, this is some of the easiest development you're going to get. And so let's see what happens in a couple of lines in this gambit. So let's, for example, look at what happens if they go ahead and play d4 to try to get some central control. Well, one of the things that you can um, do very often in this gambit is play the move c5 to activate your bishop and to open this file. Now, you might be thinking, well, if they take the pawn and you trade queens, aren't you down material? So isn't it bad to trade in a position like this? But the reality is the fact that after you take this pawn, the fact that the board is so open, your bishops are going to dominate so much that the, the one pawn doesn't matter. And you can already see just visually how amazing this position seems to be for black. So let's say they defend the pawn by moving the king. Well, you can very easily just develop your, your pieces and get your rooks into the center of the board and at the right moment castle. And even though, you know, you might be thinking they're wrecking your structure, it doesn't matter because they cannot castle. Their king is here stranded um, for basically ever and you have tons of control with your rooks and with your bishops, as you'll see in the rest of this game, um, to the point that, you know, for an example here, you're already threatening something like this. So if they play a random move, well, you can see how bad this is where you're going to win the pawn one way or another. So here you're going to win back the pawn like this, for example, um, or if they instead um, play a move, uh, you know, maybe like knight to d2, well, you're still going to be able to win the pawn in a position like this by taking the pawn on f2. And so the point is, you're going to win back the material, and after that, you're still going to have a very dominating position because of how open the position is and because of the fact that your bishops are the first to develop, so they don't really have that chance to match with their bishops. Now, what happens if they keep the queens on the board? Because that seems like a, a better chance for them. And so let's say that instead they play a move like bishop to e3 here and, and don't open up the, the position. Well, now you can develop your pieces as well, and they're also going to develop it. And at the right moment, because the fact that you have these open uh, diagonals in this case, you're going to be able to attack. And it's just going to be very hard for white to defend from all of your attacks because of how many pieces uh, you have developed, how many pieces you can develop very quickly as well. It's just very difficult to play this as white accurately um, and to defend from all of the potential attacks. And so this, this attack here is already um, pretty annoying for white. And so you can see that really, regardless of whether the queens come on, uh, or stay on or come off the boards, you're going to have great chances to win back the material um, and continue with some good attacks. Now to end the video, I quickly just want to go over an example game that you might see. So we get to this position, um, and this was a real game, by the way, between two 2,000 rated players. Um, and you can see that black basically just developed their pieces. They went for a different setup. Instead of c5, they developed their knight, which is another approach. And you can see that this is already adding some pressure to the king here, where uh, after castles, you allow this fork, but it doesn't really matter, because even though they're going to win material, you have such a dominating position with the king in the center. And this is what I mean when it comes, uh, you know, does material here really matter because of how dominating the position is for black? It's really the piece activity over the material. So you're down a piece and a couple of pawns. But again, it doesn't matter because of how many pieces your rooks are activated and the fact that this king is just stranded here. Um, so for example, c5 was, was played. Um, and you can see that you win back the material, and then you still have such a, a beautiful position with, again, your bishops opened here um, and your rooks. And those are the pieces that are typically going to win the game, not necessarily your queens, 
but these bishops in these open positions. And here, uh, white resigned in view of the fact that you're going to lose um, a lot of material. Hopefully you guys learn from this video and enjoy this gambit. Let me know if you guys try it out and what you thought of this video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.